Hello and welcome to our webinar, Recognition Basic Training for the U.S. Submarine Force, How to Engage, Empower, and Encourage. We're going to get started today with introducing myself. I am Julie Dorr. I will be your moderator for today. Um, I am going to be working with you, uh, hopefully helping you navigate, get that submarine humor, navigate our webinar today. <laughs> Um, specifically, I wanted to let you know that our presentation will last about 45 minutes, and the remaining time we'll have available for your questions. If you have uh, a need or desire, we have included a handout for today. The handout is over in the dashboard section, and all you need to do is download that. If you have any issues with that, by all means, email me, and I will you know, send that to you so that you have it to take notes. We've also uh, got area for questions for those of you that have joined us before. Just enter in your question in the dashboard at any point in time and we'll cover those at the end of the presentation. Before we get started, please note that this webinar and all of the accompanying materials are protected by copyright and that the entire conference is being recorded. This presentation provides general information only and does not constitute legal advice. We recommend that you consult with your legal counsel to address your specific situation. So let's get started today. First, I need to let you know that Linda Duffy, the president of human, uh, the president of Ethos Human Capital Solution, has jumped ship on us. See how I'm getting this submarine humor going? She is actually <laughs> at a conference today. Of course, if you need to have any help with your human resources strategy, recruiting or developing some of your leadership talent, feel free to give her a call. Her contact information is on the screen right now. And then of course, we have our true person holding down the fort, attorney Marla Mara Robinson. Marla's with the law firm Mara Robinson, Jackson and Clarkson, where she's a partner and head of the firm's transactional department. She primarily practices in the areas of corporate, mergers and acquisitions, real estate, finance and employment law. Marla, I'm glad you're here to introduce our guest today. Thank you very much, Julie. I'm very excited. It isn't very often that we get the opportunity to hear from a U.S. Navy submarine officer such as Mark. Uh, Mark Kohler is the president of Lead with Purpose. It's a company that's dedicated to helping people lead more purposeful lives. He has over 30 years of business and life experience that includes the submarine officer position, but also interim CEO, COO, entrepreneur, husband, father, soccer coach, <laughs> author. He's the author of the book, Lead with Purpose, Getting Everyone on the Same Page, Leading with Purpose. Uh, during the last 10 years, Mark has been brought into distressed companies as interim CEO, COO. He's developed a reputation as someone who can tackle the worst of business situations. And that often means getting everybody on your team on the same page. Um, during the Mark's time as interim CEO and COO, he's witnessed the power of the human spirit and the role of a leader to inspire and help everyone reach their full potential. He has four-year degrees in both physics and mechanical engineering, so he's not a, an ignorant person. <laughs> he's an educated person. And is a Lean Six Sigma black belt. He'll have to tell us what that is. He served in the U.S. Navy Submarine Force from 1988 to 1993, and we thank him for that service. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Mark. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for uh, for having me here today. I really appreciate it, and thanks for the uh, the introduction. So the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. So let me just make sure I can go to the next slide here. Okay, perfect. All right, so... Let me go back. Okay, so Lieutenant Kohler, come forward. The executive officer orders me to the front of the all hands meeting with the entire crew of the USS Pogi on Pier 1 of Submarine Base Point Loma in San Diego. And as I stand at attention, he starts to read, for outstanding service of duty while attached to and serving in USS Pogi, SSN 647 as main propulsion assistant from May 1990 to May 1991. Lieutenant Junior Grade Kohler consistently performed his demanding duties in an exemplary and highly professional manner. As he continues to read through, I think back to the last 12 months where the captain set the bar really high saying that we would be the first of the last four submarines to make it out of the shipyard on time. We were in the dry dock, systems were ripped apart, there was a 
five large 20 by 20 foot holes in the hull. And as my mind races, I review the hardest 12 months of my life. Only with extreme hard work and effort were we able to get all of the systems put back together, the holes in the submarine welded up, complete the sea trials, and get the crew ready to deploy. And as he reads these last sentences, a strong, positive energy rushes through my entire body. The executive officer hands me the commendation letter, and with pride, I go back to my original position in formation. As the all-hands meeting ends, I walk back to the submarine more engaged and energized than ever before. And it's interesting, how could a few words of praise in front of my peers and a piece of paper make me feel so good and push me to do more and be better? You know, the US Navy's recognition systems of words of praise, letters of commendations, ribbons, and medals is born out of 200 plus years of what works to motivate people and drive them to greater levels of performance. And you know, millions have sacrificed their lives for praise, honor, and recognition. So my name is Mark Kohler. I'm the president of Lead With Purpose and author of the book, Leading With Purpose. Thanks so much for the great introduction and um, thanks for having me here today. I'm excited to share with you this simple but powerful system and show you how you can use it to drive employee engagement. And again, thanks for making the choice to, to join us today. Um, we have a new approach, it's uh, E3, it's engage, empower, and encourage, and we believe that the most successful leaders today can use that to encourage the people they lead to live more purposeful and inspiring lives. So um, I just want to share with you a little bit about Lead With Purpose, and um, our tools are based out of uh, my experiences. I spent six years in the U.S. Submarine Force. That's the only picture of me on a submarine. And um, it does prove to my wife and my kids that I was on a submarine. Um, and then I got out and I went to work for big businesses like Honeywell and, and Siemens. And then what happened is I jumped off and started doing small business turnarounds. And I actually thought the small business was a lot like a big business. Um, and I brought big business tools to small business. Now I was, I was mistaken. And when I bought these big business tools forward, I almost killed these small businesses. And what I found was that with really nothing to lose and these companies that were really struggling, I went back to my time in the submarine force and I found out that the small business was actually more like the submarine force. And so what I did was I brought those tools forward and those tools, I did that for about 10 years and those tools became the foundation for what is legal purpose. So applying these Navy tools to the small businesses helped me to get really great results. Let me get to the next slide. Okay, good. So one of the things that we have is we have a, um, uh, this is just a quick overview. We have a one page success plan that you can create. On the plan is everything you need to run your company long term and everything that you see here that's in red and has the symbol of the heart associated with it um, has to do with your long term inspiring story. And I'm gonna talk about this uh, in the presentation of how you use these things in your recognition system. And you use these things to engage people. And then anything that's in blue and has a symbol, the check mark on it, is what we use to uh, empower people. And these are shorter term goals. And the purpose of this single page um, success plan is to help you to connect your shorter term goals to your inspiring story. And what it does is it gives everybody in your company the same exact vantage point to view the company from. What's great about this is um, it drives employee engagement. Yeah, I found that engagement is the holy grail to helping to create success and helping to keep people focused on really what matters most. And what I found is what, when I was able to create employee engagement, I was able to create really strong teams that could rely upon each other and ultimately really go far together and get great results. So just, um, um, that's the opening. I wanna um, just ask the, uh, everybody a, uh, a couple of questions here. Um, on a scale of one to 10, um, I wanna understand the value that you place on recognition. So just in the questions box, if you could type in, how important do you think recognition is uh, for your company and for your employees? For your employees? So one, it's a total waste of time recognition. 10, it, could, it can be very impactful for my company and the employees. So just type in on a scale of one to 10, how impactful do you think wow. us, uh, having a strong recognition system is? Mark, we're getting all 10s and one six. 
okay, coming got in it. and just, yeah, all tens. <laughs> okay, awesome. So now the, that's great. So we have a strong understanding that recognition can be extremely powerful. Um, one other question I wanna ask you is, if you were to evaluate your current recognition system that you use or your leadership team uses in your company, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your current recognition system? One, not really good. 10, it's the best recognition system in the world. So just type in what you, what you think uh, your recognition system is. Uh-oh. Here we're scoring a little less. Uh, we're in the ones and the fives and the threes. Well, we got a, a nine there. So we've got one, one group that's doing better, but mostly lower level one, two, three. Okay, and, and I don't want you to feel alone. Um, this is what really happens, um, and I, I see this a lot. So one final piece that I'd like you to just type in to have us get a strong understanding of um, what you really struggle with. What's the, tough, what's the biggest challenge that you have? What's the toughest part that you have for having a great recognition system? Can you just type that in? I'll give you 15 seconds. Type in what's the biggest challenge you have to getting to having a great recognition system. So we've got a few things here, too many things going on, time, cost, um, time to assess, uh, money, alignment along teams, uh, nonprofit status, uh, consistency, making time to get various departments together. Time seems to be a big one, budget also seems to be a big one. Yeah, fantastic. So thank you so much for putting that all in there. Um, that's really great. And thank you for, again, for sharing that with me. So here's the thing. What I, what I want to share with you is that um, recognition systems, it's one of the biggest missed opportunities that we have. And we can make something very simple and we can follow the tools that are in the U.S. Submarine Force. And I'm going to share that with you today. But here's the thing. Recognition costs nothing right? And it can have a high impact on people's engagement and productivity levels. And it's really simple and easy to do. It's probably one of the things employees crave almost the most um, when, they're, when they're there. So Deloitte um, did a study and they asked employees and 82% of employees said they're just not getting enough recognition. And this isn't just the millennials of today. So um, some of you might be thinking that they, they did this across all generations. So here's, here's the goal for today. My goal is to show you how to use um, your story of your purpose, your values, and your vision, and how to create a simple but powerful recognition system and implement it at your company. You know, and although this is born out of the nuclear submarine force, this is not nuclear physics, and I'm gonna show you really how simple it is. So I'm gonna start off with um, some Maslow's hierarchy. So if there's any people that are in psychology, I'm probably gonna really uh, brutalize this. But there's, a, there's some basic levels of um, needs that, that humans have. And down, down below are the, psycholo uh, the psychological needs of safety and stability, et cetera. But as we go one above, you can see there's a, there's a wanting to belong to something bigger than ourselves and wanting to belong to a team. And this is really level, level three. You know, and since the earliest of times, humans know that their strength in numbers and so we are wired to want to belong to a group that's making a difference in the world. Now, um, with Lead With Purpose, um, this becomes a very strong bond amongst employees when they clearly understand three things. Number one, what is the purpose of your company and how it makes a difference in the world? Number two is strongly know the values of your culture. I'm not talking about just having things sitting up on the wall or having it on your coffee mug. Really live in the, the, the values. And the third is a vision of where you're going to be in 10 years and a big accomplishment that the team's going after. Now, I call this the story. I call this your story. And if we look at um, just our one page success plan that we have, you can see that the story is represented by three of the boxes on the screen. The brand purpose or your mission statement is in the upper left hand side. You have five values, um, probably all very familiar with values. And then you have a vision of where the company is going to be. In, in 10 years. And these boxes, when done appropriate, help people to feel a sense of belonging. So that's the, that's the one level of, of Maslow's hierarchy. The second level, one above the, uh, the, the previous one, is really praise and recognition. And people want to know that they've done a good job, um, that people are watching them. And what we find is that the rule of esteem recognizes that all humans need and want acceptance and recognition. 
and humans can't get ever enough of it. You know, and we've all seen this, and we've all felt it ourselves. You can give simple praise to a child and see them soar. And it's the same with, with employees. Humans have a psychological need to be respected and accepted. And we want praise so we can feel admired and satisfy our need for personal wealth. So really what's going on here um, when, when we provide praise or we provide recognition in, in front of people? And, and here's what happens on a, on a very basic level. What happens is um, there's a dopamine release and, and this has been triggered and set up for about the last 100,000 years, our brain's been receiving rewards and recognitions. And what happens is this dopamine release um, when we're recognized makes us feel really good. And what happens is the dopamine ignites the rewards and decision-making parts of, of the brain. So what we do is we start attaching a good feeling to what we did. And when we can help uh, attach um, and connect emotion to thought, then what we do is we help to drive behaviors. And this dopamine is, is what does this. So why is this super important? Hey, there's so much information flying at us every single day. And our brain can become very fickle with information and get distracted. And we start changing our mind and lose our focus. And as we all know, the heart is less likely to, to change. So it's really important that we, um, that we have a really strong message. So here's just, a, here's just a study that I, I thought was interesting. 24 students at a college in Virginia decided to see whether they could use compliments to change the way um, a person dressed on campus. Um, and what they did is they complimented all female students who wore the color blue. And what happened was the percentage of uh, women wearing blue over a period of time increased from 25% to 38%. They then went and said, hey, well, what if we changed it from a red dress? And what they found is that the, um, the increase went from 11% to 22%. And here's the thing, when, favorably, when we favorably comment on behavior, it increases that behavior. So we know that recognition makes us feel good and you know the science behind what happens when we are recognized. So let's look at the results of some other studies uh, on the benefits of recognition. Number one is a study that, that found that the strongest teams have a five to one positive to negative ratio of positive comments to negative comments. Now, this is a study that was not only done um, in companies, this was also done in marriages. So they said that the strongest marriages also, also uh, have, have this. Next, what we found was that when recognition is tied to your value system, 79% uh, of the people in the company have a really strong understanding of the goals of the company. So this is, this is really important. I'm gonna to talk to you about a values-based system um, here shortly, but this is a, a, a very powerful study. Next, there's a study done by Global Force, and this was directed by the Work Human Research Institute, surveying thousands of employees, and they wanted to see what the impact of frequency of recognition was on engagement levels. And when people are never recognized, you can see that the engagement level is down to 30%. But if we just recognize the employee once a month, once a month, the engagement level increases from 30% to 66%. And so as you can see, as you go down the chart, the more frequent the recognition, the higher levels of engagement. The next uh, part of that was how does receiving recognition rewards at work make you feel? And you can see it says, it makes me feel appreciated. Now I'm gonna ask you to go down about five steps there. It says, um, it makes me feel more committed, 81%. It makes me work harder. It helps me to be more productive, 78%. So again, these are just studies backing this up of things that a lot of us already know. Next piece of that study. Okay, so next piece of that study, they asked people, um, they believe that their company is the best place to work. When people are just recognized within the last month, 91% of the employees of that company said, we believe, I believe this is the best place to work. And then a couple other pieces here, they believe the company really cares. 87% if just recognized within the last month. Okay, and the final one is culture is fun and enjoyable. And you can see that, again, the statistics go up when we recognize people more. Now, there's a really um, famous quote by um, Mark Twain, and he, he talked about compliments. He said, I can live for two months on a good compliment. And I think 
um, all of our employees, um, anybody who we come into contact with every single day um, probably feels the same way. Okay, good. So what are the challenges to recognitions? I asked you up front what the biggest challenges you had to recognitions. And um, thanks for sharing all those with me, Julie. But let's go through those. First is, I think that companies, make sure the, the slides in. I think companies make their recognition system way too complex so that only one or two people really know how to operate it. How do we do it? Who can do it? What are the different levels there are? How do we make it fair? So I think we try to make it way too complex. Number two is because it's so complex and people don't understand it, um, it's really unclear and there's really no focus on it. I see that a lot. The next thing I find is that we as um, either business owners or business leaders are way too busy. And we always say, hey, I'm gonna do that recognition later and do it later means we don't do. Often I find that the, get to the next slide here. Often I find that the story, the brand purpose, you know, your mission statement, your values and your vision is not very clear. Or maybe it's only clear in your head, but your employees don't really understand those pieces. So those are the things that I, I really see um, as being challenges to having great recognition systems. So what I wanna do right now is just talk to you about the keys to having a great recognition system. I'm gonna share with you some examples. Okay, so the first thing is you have to make it really simple. Make your recognition system really simple. And if you follow the what we've done in the US submarine force, I think you'll get some really great results. But think about making it really simple. The components of your recognition system need to be based on these three pieces. There we go. So the components of the recognition system need to be based on these three pieces. What is your brand purpose? What's the reason you exist, the difference you make in the world? What are your values? And what are your what's your blue sky vision? So and, and again, if you use a one page success plan, if you use your own planning document, it really doesn't matter to me, but I would ask you just to create a system. And this is just an example of what one company did. They took their brand purpose, their values and their vision that's at the top of their one page success plan. And what they did is they just took their values and what they did is they created this little slip. This slip probably fits in, in, in the size of your hand. And what they do is they, um, when they recognize people live in any of the values, what they do is they circle one of them and they, they present that to the person and then they put it on a wall and they share that with everybody. So let me share with you um, what that actually looks like. Here is, um, here's the wall. You can see they have all the, the symbols of their core values. They have the words underneath it and then you can see the, the, uh, the little recognition slips that they created. I call this a campfire wall. You can call it a recognition wall. It doesn't really matter. In a high traffic area of your company, if you just create this simple system of putting these symbols up and then also putting the words underneath it of what your values are and then you recognize people in and around and in front of that campfire wall and then put those um, recognition slips on the wall, it'll help to really engage people. So that's just one example. The next example I, I wanna share with you, this is another company, this is a manufacturing company. You can see that they have on their, um, their values, they're not only in English, but they've also decided to put them in Spanish. And you can see they have their recognition slips that they have put around there. And these are just some ideas to, to give you. This is another manufacturing facility where they took their purpose, their values, and their vision, and they created the slips. This is actually on a magnetic wall, and they just use magnets and, and put all those slips on there. But every single one of those recognitions there is recognizing people for living the values, the purpose, or completing a goal. So what this is doing is not only providing that dopamine release to, to, the, uh, to the employees and helping to drive great behavior, what it's doing is it's helping to build the values and build their culture. Okay, and I have one other example for you. This is a company that actually had the recognitions um, at people's desks. And if you just take a look at this, they have, they created a leaf and what they did is, who is it, what is it, and when is it? And you can see how simple this really becomes to provide recognition that's based around an employee uh, doing something or employee behavior.
Okay, good. So those are just some examples um, for you. Now, one of the other things that was really important that, that you should do is you should praise people in front, in front of everybody. And um, this is just really a golden rule because here's what happens when you do that. Number one, the engaged person, the person who is getting the reward um, is, uh, finds this extremely memorable and they're being recognized in front of all of their peers. Now, one statistic found that 64% of um, in, uh, recognitions, employees most remembered when they were from their upper manager. So number one, you're engaging the person and driving that behavior. Number two, people that are watching this want to emulate that behavior because they want to get a recognition also. That's number two. Number three is you're actually building your culture and you're building the value of that basic, simple slip of, of paper. Some people call it a caught in the act slip, some people call it a recognition slip, but you're building the value of getting one of those slips. And not only recognize people for living the values, the purpose and the vision, but you can also recognize them for completing goals or overcoming obstacles. And what this does is it shows that you as a leader are watching the goals and helps you to create a culture of accountability. So in our system that we have, we, um, we allow you to create digital recognitions. This is just our online system that we have. If you click on the, the heart um, in, in any of these, um, in, in, in your one page success plan, what'll happen is a digital recognition system will come up. You can type in um, like a caught in the act slip. And what happens is an email gets sent out to everybody who's connected to the plan, recognizing that person. And then it saves all of the, the digital recognition. So it's a, it's a neat way for, for you to do that. But you can also use the paper system that I, that I just shared with you. Okay, so when we take a look at um, how, do, how do we do this, um, one of the key things is once you put together your story and it's really clear and simple and you have your um, recognition slips, it's really important that you're able to um, find ways and find time to um, have these recognitions happen. And I can tell you there's a meeting structure that we recommend, and I'm gonna go through what the meeting structure looks like, but um, there should be a daily call that happens, a 15 minute daily call that happens every single morning in your company that goes over what's happening that week, and if there's any challenges that are happening um, that day, and if anybody needs any help with anything. And during this daily call, we highly recommend that you have a, a set of slips and have them filled out before, and this is where you can recognize people in front of each other. So um, this is a great way to, to actually do that. We have a set of agendas um, available in our system. And this is just, uh, um, this is just the agenda, agenda for that. And if you see anything that's in green and has the symbol of the thumbs up, we have the encourage piece. So you can see down here below, you can have the caught in the act stories um, of sharing any successes and stories of people uh, living your values, purpose, or vision. So this is just a great example during a daily call when you can have those slips and pass them out in front of other people. That's one thing. Number two is there should be, a, we recommend you have a weekly leadership meeting. This is a, a company, this is Drosty Law Firm in, in Irvine. Um, and what they did is they, ha they have their weekly meeting. They actually have the one page success plan up on the wall. They have printouts of it. And during this time, what they're able to do too is through the agenda, um, not only review the, the goals that are happening, but you can see way down here below there, they share caught in the X stories of not only themselves, but other employees living the, living the values and, and the purpose. So this is just a, another great time to do that. That's a weekly meeting. And then the next, um, the next opportunity is, is during a monthly meeting. We recommend you have a monthly all hands meeting where you as the leader stand up. This is a Proline Racing. Uh, this is the, the president of the company. They have a stand-up meeting. You can see it very similar to what we what we were doing in the Navy. And he's just talking about um, all the goals that were accomplished last month, what they need to focus on the next month. And they have a little Blinko board there that they throw all those little slips in the in a hat. And if, you're, if your name gets pulled out, you get to play the Blinko board and, and win something. So you can make it really fun at your company. But again, we have an agenda for that. And you can see down here, um, there's an encourage piece of, of catching people in the act and, and doing that. But here's what it really looks like. And what it does is it forces you to um, have these connections with people. And this is what your meetings would look like if you did a daily stand up, if you did a weekly, which, are, which is represented in green. And then if you had an 8.30 um, morning weekly management meeting, that's represented on Monday in blue. 
And then down here below, you can see uh, Friday on the 29th, you have your monthly all hands meeting. But what this does, this meeting structure um, and the agendas that we have um, sets you up so that you can have recognitions and do these recognitions frequent and often and catch people in the act. And it also makes sure that you're doing it in front of other employees. Okay, so um, let's talk about the, the best recognitions. And this is, uh, this is uh, studies that have been done. The best recognitions are specific, the best recognitions are really distinct, and the best recognitions are sincere. This is a chiropractic office. You can see they have their values there. All you, they did is they took those values, they would circle it, and they'd have an open line, and they would fill it out and says, Sarah J was caught exhibiting our values and it was really specific, working on Jane's Medicare paperwork, and who it was issued by, and the date it was issued. Now, one of the things that I used to do, people said, hey, how do you do this? How do you print these things out? What I used to do is, um, I used when I was in this company helping um, them turn around, what I used to do is I used to just print out 10 slips and put it at the end of my desk, and by the end of the week, I wanted to have all 10 of those slips um, gone. And that was just an easy way, and we had all the leadership team have 10 of these slips printed out, and again, that was just, if we saw them at the end of the week, they were gone, then, then we've handed out enough recognitions. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is just um, really to keep track. This is an example, uh, one page success plan. And what you can do is you can print that out. And um, I put five boxes underneath each one of these, five or four boxes underneath these. And when I would carry, I would carry the success plan around when I saw something, someone doing something, I would look at the plan. I'd um, take the appropriate words and I put a sentence together that actually um, recognized people again and uh, then I would just X that off. So that was another way for me to track how many recognitions I was giving. And so if you take a look at a success plan, there's an engage piece and then there's an encourage piece. And again, these are just um, other ways when I would carry around the one page success plan. When someone completed a goal, I would just, you know, it would, it would prompt me to uh, tell Cindy, hey, great job on completing your quarterly goal of getting one-on-ones done with leadership. And then this is just the, another example of, hey, Joe, I received a call from Litton who was really happy with how you solved the product return. Thanks for treating them customer first. It's really important that you use those words so you can uh, continue to drive that with the employees and drive their behavior. Okay, and so some of you have probably heard this also about management by walking around, management by wandering around. Here's the thing, a lot of people say, hey, I, I don't really catch recognitions, and I can tell you they're under your nose every single day, and you just have to find them. And be really generous with your praise. You know, we all wear an imaginary badge that says, make me feel important. And um, Don Peterson, who's the chairman of Ford, he said the most important 10 minutes of his day was the beginning where he run around and boosted people and encouraged them. So 15 minutes a day, if you can do walk around and you can do one encouragement a day, this would be a great goal for you. Okay, and this is just a quote, and this is uh, the, uh, the author is unknown, but a word of encouragement during a failure is worth more than an hour of praise after a success. So that's the... Uh, that's the, the presentation, and um, uh, when I talk about uh, uh, recognition systems, so what I wanna do is just do a quick summary for you, and then we're gonna open it up to any questions that you might have, and I'll answer any of those questions in the time that we have allotted. So um, as a business tool, a well-considered recognition strategy can contribute to employees taking more pride in their work, bringing more attention and resourcefulness to their tasks, and feeling more connected to corporate objectives and collaborating more effectively. And here's the, here's the deal. You know, one of the biggest missed opportunities we have is this basic recognition system that I just shared with you. Again, it doesn't cost anything and it can have a high impact on your people's engagement and productivity levels. It's extremely easy to do and it's what employees really crave. Remember that when this happens, there's actually a dopamine release um, that, that is triggered and again, um, People want to have that dopamine release happen again because it makes them feel really good. And so this is what happens. And so we need to take, a, take advantage of that. So a values-based recognition system, again, is really important. I highly recommend that you take your 
strategy or your success plan or your one your your plan that you have take your purpose your values and your blue sky vision and make them really clear and simple for people and for people to understand and then just just create a, a campfire wall or ca create a recognition wall in a very high traffic um, part of part of your company and um, you can use lead with purpose um, recognition system. This is when you click on the heart, this is what comes up. You can see the values, the purpose, and the vision are on the left-hand side. And you can see um, which people you would want to recognize. And then you would just write in a comment when you click send encouragement down here, what would happen is an encouragement would be sent. And then we highly recommend that you recognize people in, in front of others. It's really important to do. It not only helps the person who's being recognized, but all the people who are watching that person be recognized. You're helping to show people what behaviors you feel are really acceptable. And when they go above and beyond, they'll be recognized for also. We highly recommend that you use some type of uh, meeting structure to help drive meetings. Um, again, a quick daily meeting, a weekly meeting, and a monthly meeting will give you all these great opportunities. And I'd highly recommend that you encourage often. You know, some of the um, studies that I showed you said that with just one, just doing one encouragement every 30 days is super helpful, but I would recommend that you try to look at every seven days, trying to touch your um, uh, employees and give them some type of recognition um, on a weekly basis. And if you're able to do that, what I, what I think you'll see is I think you'll see that how recognition can really increase engagement in your company. I want to remind you that not only um, do the strongest teams, but also the strongest marriages have a five to one positive to negative ratio when they have conversations with each other. Okay, and since we're, I came from the submarine force, I got Uncle Sam up there, but my challenge to you is that um, I want to challenge you to do at least one encouragement per day and track it and then see, see how that works with your company. Okay, good. So I spent uh, just about 40 minutes. It's been uh, really good. Um, we have some time left. And uh, what I want you to do is um, if you could just type in What's been the most beneficial um, to you about the recognition structure I've shared? And um, if you could just type that in the, in the box, what's been the most beneficial thing that you're gonna take away from this, from this today? You spent 40 minutes and um, you've listened to me talk about a recognition system, but what's been the most beneficial thing about the recognition structure that I've talked to you about? Well, we've got some responses coming in and just the importance of recognition is one of them. The ease of doing this and how impactful it can be without the tie into money. Um, that it's track, trackable and monitorable, are those words, weekly praise. Um, it can be put together and executed quite simply. Recognizing others isn't just about money. Um, the reminder that how important public recognition is and how easy it is to forget it. Uh, the stats behind recognition um, helps to sell it to teams and management. Just really good examples overall. That's fantastic. And, you know, there's a couple comments that are in there. Um, we always think recognition has to be tied to money. And, and it really doesn't. Now, you can't pay someone half of what they could be paid on the market. But um, I believe you can pay someone plus or minus 10% of what they could be get paid on the market. And then this recognition system just really is, is what they really thrive and really want to have. So those are some great, um, great comments. It uh, tells me that you're engaged and, and understand this. I want to ask one last question. How confident do you feel in implementing this recognition structure in your company? How confident do you feel you could implement this in your company? One, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Five, um, I can do this this is easy, I can do this. So if you could just type that in, one, it's gonna be a real struggle, five is, is uh, really easy to do. We're getting some nines and eights and then some lower numbers, the threes and fives. 
Um, okay. And I think this is probably a question that's going to come later. You know, they, they like the structure, but it's the manager buy-in that's going to be an issue. Got some fours and fives. Um, so, so, again, so, the, the whole so, buy-in. Yeah, so, so Julie, so Julie, I, I, uh, I, I should have changed, I changed the scale on them. I said one to five. So I think a couple of people oh. answered eight and nines and I, I, uh, that's a, that's a learning for me. So, so I think the eights and nines are good, but I think the fours and fives are, are, are strong also. I read, yes, you're right. Yeah. So, um, okay, that's great. So, um, that's, that's excellent because this can have a huge impact in your company. I'm telling you, the simple piece of paper that costs literally six cents and you cut that up into six different recognition slips that has some ink on it can have a huge impact in your company. And uh, I hope you, I hope you take this back and, and, and really look at implementing it in your company. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open it up to some general questions that people have and um, I'll stay online and try to answer all those questions. And then if there's any follow-up, um, um, I'm, I'm certainly available. My contact information um, will be available also. Great. And again, just to remind you, some of you obviously have been using the question section to respond to some of the, the questions that Mark have been asking, but feel free to type your question in that box and send it, and I'll read it aloud for Mark and Marla to chime in too if she'd like to. Um, but I think one of the questions that came up during the course of us doing a little bit of the survey work is how to sell it to management, Mark. Um, you know, we're all watching this and, and drooling over the simplicity and the effectiveness of it, but what yeah. are some effective techniques that you would suggest that we could use to sell to our managers? Yeah, so, so it's interesting. I, it, it, uh, it really depends on the, the current um, recognition structure that's, that's set in the company. So if it's something that's really working, that's fantastic. But, um, but to, to sell it to managers, um, you know, and I can share some of these slides with you. I mean, the, the data is overwhelming, you know, that, that this, this is something that psychology wise that people really crave and it helps drive their performance. It isn't just someone saying, hey, look, at, that made me feel good. If you look at this data from the global force, they actually wanted to find out um, what was the effect of recognition on engagement? And I can tell you that engagement is the key to getting everyone wrapped around a common purpose and a shared vision. Today, if you're all alone at the top trying to drive your company, you're overwhelmed and you're working 14, 15 hour days. So what's the way that you can get everyone engaged around a common purpose and a shared vision is having a really simple story that everybody can understand and then make that engages people because they feel like they're part of a team and so once you have people engaged then you can empower people because you can push decision making down to them so i would i would say that um you know leaders today it's not about it's not about them at the top alone making all the decisions they're just going to be overwhelmed long-term success at a company is the entire company um, helping to manage change and drive results. And that's everyone from the top all the way down to the bottom. And so I would say that how do you create that shared consciousness and that thing that they really care about? It's, it's really values. So I would use, um, I would use a combination. Actually, I would just use the, the statistics in this, in this uh, survey and I can share that with um, Julie. I can share that with you and, and you can share that with the team. All right. I appreciate that. Um, we got another question from Jen, and she's asking like how this fits in with some of the other, you know, incentive programs and things that they might have. For example, you know, workplace safety or you know, productivity or innovation ideas. So, do you fold that into this bigger picture, or how would you be able to, you know, get all these moving pieces and programs together into one? Yeah, so so here's the here, here's the thing. I would recommend that you make it extremely simple, and then and then what you can do is um, so so the simplicity of it is make sure it's your purpose is really simple and clear. Make sure your values okay. are simple and clear. Make sure your vision is simple and clear. And then what you can do is you can use that when if you have a safety goal to be above ninety five percent. When you're above ninety five percent, or someone's contributed. And where the entire team's contributed to being above 95%, that's where in the all hands meeting, you can say, 
hey, great job, and use one of your values and saying, hey, staying really focused on, on, um, on safety or productivity. So you, you not only use it to, you not only use the values to, to drive behavior, but you also use that same recognition system um, as it relates to productivity. Um, if you had a $2 million sales goal and uh, the person meets the $2 million sales goal, then, then that salesperson um, gets recognized in front of everybody. So that's how I would use it. I would not make it too complicated where you have different levels of um, productivity goals and, and make it really rigid. Um, have it be really loose, but actually have it be, um, uh, when you roll it out, when you roll this out, it's best to roll it out just to the management team first. And then what I would do is after they've been using it and you've really set what really is considered a recognition, then you can roll it out to the rest of the company. It takes about a month to have the management team use it first and work out any kinks and then roll it out to the rest of the company. But just, well, just don't and, make it too that, complex. Yeah. And that leads to another question from Sue. Um, she's asking, you know, we've tried things like this before and, you know, is there a trick to make it sustainable? Um, you know, oftentimes it involves a monetary reward system. Do you have any tips or if they were to implement something like that, how to make sure it, it stays living and it's really embedded into the corporate culture? Yeah. So one, one other thing, that's why um, um, you creating a clear, uh, simple message. And I know I keep going back to that. The message has to be super simple and clear for people. That's number one. Number two is you have to make it part of your meeting structure. Because if you just let it be, it's not going to happen. So, so those two things are really big. Like in a daily meeting, you should be recognizing each other. And I, have, I actually have it on our agendas. We actually have an, a, you know, we have a place on the agenda. I shared that with you. So, so you have to do that. The other thing is it has to be sincere. If it's not sincere, it, it doesn't matter. And, and, and the last thing is they, they found out, I shared with you that five to one was the ratio. They found out that if it was higher than 12 to one positive to negative, it actually turned into a negative effect. And so, um, Here's, here's the reason why, because people were um, recognizing each other for just um, doing the basics. Hey, thank you so much for only spending four minutes in the bathroom instead of eight minutes. I mean, just, just like, you know, it's just stuff that wasn't really relevant to to the job. They were just over um, over recognizing each other. And and as we all know on the on the on the call here, sometimes the best teams have some conflict also. So they found that teams that were over rec over recognizing or over praising were uh, were causing um, bad behaviors and not not recognizing conflict. So I would just I would I would share with you if you make it really simple. Number one, number two is the CEO at the top and the leadership team have to be committed to it. You have to be committed to it and make this a habit. And so if you do this on for a month and you make it direct and sincere. And it's based around people's um, behaviors and the goals that they're accomplishing. It'll it'll stick. It'll stick, and uh, and and you'll you'll see the uh, you'll see the effects and impact of it. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Rosie's wondering. <laughs> Rosie, I've been there. I feel your pain. What are your recommendations for an organization that just borders on being toxic? Low morale, low engagement, minimal management communication. Um, you know, any insights on that, Mark, for Rosie? Um, can you ask Rosie what level of the organization she's at? Uh, Rosie, or, can you Ro respond Ro to that? Rosie, yeah, what, what level of the organization she's in management. are you at? Yeah, she's in okay. management. Um, you know, all, what she just talked about, it stems from the top. And I'm not talking about the management team. I'm talking about either the, the leader or the owner because people mimic what 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 is a – what their leaders do. And, and I'm not saying you're mimicking what your leader does, but um, everybody else down below, um, if it's, a, you know, I, I think it all stems from the top. So um, what are some things you can do? You can, uh, I can talk to you offline. <laughs> and um, that's what we, that's what we do. We help, we help people get a clear, simple message on purpose. And, and we show them how to, how to put that throughout their entire company. But um, here's the thing, if the leader's not interested in, in, in doing this and being purposeful, um, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a real challenge for you. So I think, the, I think the leader and the leadership team needs to be able to, 
um, needs to be able to embrace this. Um, without that, um, I think then you're really just wasting your time. And we have a couple other people commenting on that is an issue. So again, um, Mark's contact information is in the handout. Um, I highly recommend you know you spend a little time talking to him offline and see if you can't develop a strategy where you know uh, some kind of intervention might work for you. Um, Paul has a question here. Are there best practice metrics that can help senior management endorsing the effort? So in other words, we talked about you know basically selling management on this kind of system or even thinking a little bit more like this. Do you have any best practice metrics that, you know, could help, you know, keep senior management and help, you know, them understand that this is a system that they should be implementing? Yeah. So um, you'll, you'll find this interesting. I, I learned about recognition when I was a soccer coach and I went to a U.S. Uh, national soccer coaching class and what they shared with us was to recognize um, the player at least once a practice. Um, now I've done no studies on this <laughs> in the places that I've gone into but it just carried over into into work for me and so what I used to do is I used to keep a roster and practice and I used to find at least one thing that every player was doing right and it had to be real and sincere also and I would recognize them once a practice. I would I would recommend and I don't know what the statistics are those global statistics are pretty um, pretty interesting um, but I would recommend if you could recognize at least um, once a week um, every person um, that's underneath you or in your company you're gonna have a massive impact on the engagement level um, uh, of how engaged people are and what they think and view of the company the statistics I showed you were just for once a month but if you did it once a week and you just carried around a roster and you just clicked off that you what you did, I think that that would have a massive impact. Um, I don't have besides the statistics that I have in there. Um, I don't have any other studies and the statistic about um, recognizing the the person at least once a week. I, I don't have any real statistics on there. I can tell you it really helped me when I went into a company um, to uh, get everybody engaged around a common purpose and a shared set of values. Um, it helped me to, to get that team going, so. Okay, excellent. Um, and we have a question here too, it's the tie into performance reviews. Um, Anne ah. is wondering if, you know, some of these things, you know, let's face it, we all don't particularly like to write performance <laughs> reviews, but I see the benefit of these slips in actually helping to build uh, some specific examples that you can share with people during performance reviews. Any comments on that, Mark? Yeah, so just you know, if you don't know this, the performance, the annual performance review is dead. So if you're waiting a year to tell people what they're doing, it's just, it's just not effective. Um, and, um, and it would take a long time and waste of time. Even GE has given up the annual performance review. What companies are doing right now is they're doing more frequent reviews, but they're taking a lot less time. And so just let me share with you um, what we're seeing companies do. Number one is um, we're seeing companies do this either on a weekly or a monthly basis. So if a manager has 15 people in their company, they're doing, um, it, it depends again on, if you have 15 people, they're probably doing it on a monthly basis. But what they do is they have a 15, 30 minute meeting and there's five questions that they ask. Now, um, Julie, could you sl uh, shift to the next slide, please? Sure. Yeah, so what you're gonna see on the screen here is, um, this is a grid of, of um, we have a leadership passport that has all of these different um, um, best habits and routines of what's happening now. You can see that uh, on the right-hand side, there's this thing that says great job, recognitions and rewards. And I just shared with you um, what the recognitions and rewards are. But um, you can also see on there that um, there are other pieces that have to do with um, team dynamics and then human resources. In our human resources piece, we talk about doing one-on-one -on -one performance reviews. And there's five basic questions that you ask. And um, it's basically, how are you doing um, this week? What are your accomplishments? What are the challenges that you have? What are the, what are the things that you need help or resources from me so you can do your job this week? And then you ask them. Um, then you ask them any any other question that you want to. But you're what well, that's what they're doing. They're doing those um, those those. It's like those five questions 
are what you ask. Now, when someone says, what are you doing? When you ask, what are you doing? Well, um, it's, we have it in our system that it tracks all, all of the recognitions that everybody have recognized the person for. So you can easily go, go online and look and see that, but you can just go up to a campfire wall and see what someone's done in the last week and, and figure that out. So, um, those recognition slips are, are really huge, but you have to get down to a performance review. Um, and I like it. I'm 52 years old, but I'm telling you the millennials, 75, they're going to be 75% of our workforce in about 10 years. Right. And they, they want to have, um, frequent feedback on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis. So that, that's where mm -hmm. I'd wrap those into that. Perfect. Well, that is all the time we have for questions. Um, Mark, did you want to cover anything else here or you, what's the next slide here? What is that? So you can go online. We have a free 60 day trial. If you want to try out our, our one page success plan. And then we, um, what we do is we use all those habits and routines that were on the previous page and we teach you how to use the one page, that one page to do all of those different things. And if you could just hit the next slide mm -hmm. and hopefully that's not a picture of me, but uh, hopefully we can help you to get better results. <laughs> My contact information is on there, and um, if you need any help or have any additional questions that you want to ask, I'm, I'm always available. Great. Mark, thank you so much. Uh, Marla, did you want to chime in anything before I get to the close here? No, other than to uh, let everyone know that Mark was a great lead into our next uh, webinar next month, which will be the do's and don'ts of conducting workplace investigations. Um, some of that ties into performance. So we look forward to having everyone. And Mark, thank you. Excellent job. I, I, I know from first-time experience with my clients who do engage um, and reward, that it's even the tiniest rewards can, can really go a long way with the employees and morale. So thank you very much for your presentation. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thank you very much, Mark, and that'll do it for us today. Um, thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you or actually talking to you next month. Make it a great day.